Welcome to this flower painting tutorial. Today I'll be using oil paint. I'm going to be painting on canvas paper. The colours from top left to right are titanium white, lemon yellow, yellow ochre, on the next row cadmium red, rose madder, crimson alizarin. And the last row, cerulean blue, cobalt blue and permanent mauve. This is the chisel tool that I'll be using from the front and sideways on. You can see that it's a bit like a spade. I can use the edge only or the flat area. To begin the painting, I'm using a mix of lemon yellow and white. Starting roughly in the centre of the canvas paper, I'll be painting from the middle outwards. A few small circles, gradually increasing in size. Now I'm taking a small amount of yellow ochre and mixing it with the white. This colour will go on the left of the centre where it is slightly darker. It will give it the appearance of a 3D shape rather than looking flat. A bit of cadmium red mixed with the lemon yellow and white to create an orange colour. The orange mix will go on the same edge as the yellow ochre and white. Making a green mix using cerulean blue and the yellows I'm using a small amount of this on the edge of the centre of the flower. Adding a touch of crimson to darken this a bit further. Now I'm mixing in the yellows and oranges and blending towards the centre and around the bottom edge. To create some contrast, I'm adding white and the lighter colour to the right hand side. It's more of an oval than a round shape because of the angle of the flower head. This is shaped horizontally. I'll probably use more white and the reds. And in between, I have a cloth for cleaning the chisel tool between the mixers. To make my first petals, I'll be mixing some white with the rose madder. Using the edge of the chisel tool, I'll stroke in a curve to create the petal shape. It's a bit like a smile shape on one side and then mirrored on the other. The part of the petal closest to the centre will be pointed because these are folded in before opening. The end of the petal away from the centre will be slightly rounded. Now we're using some crimson alizarin for this petal which is between the others and slightly covered. To fill in the petals I'm darkening some of the edges using the edge of the chisel tool using either crimson, rose madder or cadmium red and then I'm filling in the petals by stroking in some white using the flatter part of the chisel tool. The petals are going around the centre and as I paint them the angle of the petals will change like the angle of the hands going round a clock.
using some white to highlight the centre of the petal and its curve. Adding a bit of the permanent mauve and crimson. The green shade will fill in the gaps between petals and add a slight green tinge close to the centre of the flower. making the edge darker for the flower centre now adding lemon yellow and white and blending it towards the middle I'm increasing the depth of colour to enhance each petal and to make it more vibrant.
Adding some yellow ochre to the light yellow mix and this will be applied around the edge of the first petal layer adding warmth and a yellow-orange hue which will decrease as we head towards the outer petals. Using some lemon yellow, now white and mixing it in with the flat part of the chisel tool. I'm picking up some of the orange and lemon yellow together. Adding a bit more white to make it brighter and to lift the colour. At this point the centre of the dahlia looks more like a daisy and is pretty enough in its own right. But we'll carry on because there's a way to go yet with the rest of this flower. Using some cobalt blue mixed with the green to create a dark green. This will fill in more gaps around the yellow centre between the petals. Using rose madder and white to start a new petal on the next layer. Firstly, decide how large to make the petal. The petals in this layer will be larger than in the first layer. The base of the petal will be wider and will narrow towards the outside. Some will be slightly pointed and others more rounded at the end. The sides curve outwards. I'm adding colour to the outer edges and making a centre line that curves in line with the petal shape. Adding white to highlight raised parts of the petal. Some of the petals overlap. The next petal curves over the first. Using the edge of the chisel tool, I can add more rose madder to make a darker centre line, curving like the shape of the petal to show that it bends. Using some yellow and orange mix to add warmth to the base of the petal. A touch of crimson to darken the left edge. As I add more rose and white, I'm mindful to leave a white line to highlight the centre of the petal, adding more white at the end to create contrast. Using permanent mauve to finish the centre line as it curves at the end. Some yellow, white and rose madder to add warm light tones using a dabbing technique. Adding more rose madder, cadmium red and white for depth of colour. Crimson alizarin mixed with permanent mauve to darken the tip of the petal on the right, making it stand out. Deepening the red tones and adding white on one side of the centre line. The next petal layer will be somewhere in between the two. This petal has a wide base and a narrow tip. 
using crimson mixed with the yellow and some white to add some warmth at the base. Yellows and oranges add warmth and blues make a cooler hue. Some shadow is cast by the previous layer, so as this is under the other petals, it appears darker here. For the outline of the next petal, I'm using crimson and rose madder, and I'm filling in using a mix of white and cadmium red. Because I haven't used a traditional thinning medium, the paint appears quite dry until I add more colour, a small amount of the yellow-orange mix. I'm using the end of the chisel tool to add a darker mix of rose and crimson. This will be the shadow area under the other layers. Now adding white and yellow to lighten the right side. To make a new petal on the right, I'm making a curve, deciding which way the petal has grown. The white line is the centre line, curving the same way, bending towards the right. The petals are not all the same size and shape. The petal leans to the left, so this side is darker, and it lies slightly beneath the previous one. The base of the petal narrows, but not to a point. It also has yellow and white mixed in with the petal's pink colour. Adding a tiny bit of green at the edge of the base. To mark out the edge or the outline of the next petal, Firstly, I practice each stroke in the air before making a mark to get a feel for the placement. You could call these air strokes. Although this shape is mostly straight, it still has a curve along the edge to a small rounded end, not quite a point. Filling in the petal using white to spread the pink, leaving a darker edge of pink along the bottom. The petals are mostly larger towards the outer edge. This one is much wider. For a darker centre I'm using permanent mauve mixed with cobalt blue using the point of the chisel tool to reach the corner. Now adding some crimson. I'm using red mixed with rose madder. Some yellowy highlights. I'm getting a feel for the look of the petal and might change the dark or light areas. A bit of dark here to show that the petal bends over and down.
adding some white highlight to the centre of the flower to enhance its shape. The lighter tones used here will define the edge of the petal and lift it up so that it is clearly above the shaded petal beneath. Following the same principle as before, the outer part of the petal will catch more light and be a lighter shade. Because the new petal and the one above are very similar tones, I need to make a greater contrast between the two, so I've decided to darken the edge of the one above. Starting a petal on the left, this is going to bend downwards and to the left away from the centre. The petals on the bottom right lean down towards the right and the ones on the left do the opposite.
I'll keep filling in around the flower, being mindful of the overall shape and the number of layers.
Because of the angle of the flower, some of the outer layer appears smaller at the top than at the bottom. Some of the petals are just peeping through in between the others. These are a few of the final highlights. I hope that you've enjoyed this painting tutorial and had fun if you painted too. I look forward to being back soon.